this question, we're going to find a volume of revolution. And first thing we need to do is graph this region. So we have a 7 square root y function. And that is g of y. So it's a function of y. So x equals 7 square root y. There may be a reason they gave it to us as a function of y instead of a function of x. And on the left by the y-axis, and we're revolving about the x-axis, we're also going to be limited by y equals 8. All right, let's go ahead and graph this. We're going to need quite a bit of positive y-axis. And going up to 8, 4, 8 right there. So 0 to 8 and 7, x equals 7 square root y. So how to graph this? I'm not used to uh, being a function of y, so let's solve for y. So we have x over 7 equals square root y. We'll square both sides. And I squared over 49 is y. So it's a parabola. The intercept is the origin right here. Uh, let's see, we'll just plug in x is 1. And when x is 7, y will be 1. 7, y will be 1. This is not a very steep parabola. It's where y. All right. We go off like that and uh, we're bounded between y y needs to be greater than zero and less than eight so here we go on the left by the y-axis all right this is our region here and we're rotating it about the x-axis so I'm going to draw the rotation arrow like that. We should be making cylindrical shells, not disks. So that means our cross section is parallel to the rotation axis like this. I like to draw the rotated version of my cross section because it will be a cylinder. It's easy for me to see the radius and the height. So our radius is measured from the rotation axis to our y coordinate. That's our radius. We are going to have functions. This is a dy integral because our cross section is horizontal. So you have to change the y coordinate so the cross section covers the whole region. That's why it's a dy integral. So we did need a function x equals 7 square root y. So we did need a function of y. And we need our height. So our height is right there, h. All right, it doesn't really matter which one we do first. So we need a function of y. So the radius is a function of y. And I'm going to go big minus small. All right, so what's the big? This one's a little tricky to see the big, but the small is right here is zero. Now what's the big? The big is whatever our y value is here and that will just be y. So r of y is just y. Now we're going to look for the height h of y also big minus small. Okay on this the big is the right the small is the left so the small is constant. It's always right here. So the small again is going to be zero coincidence, although it shows up quite a bit. So the small is zero. Now the big, the big is changing. The big is on this curve and we've already written it as a function of y. So it's seven square root y is the big. 
And we do need our formula, so that is something you're gonna need. This one is two pi integral RH. We're gonna go A to B. We have a dy, two pi. All right, these are A and B are Y values. So we're going from the bottom at zero up to eight. I was kind of hinted at right here. All right, so we're going zero to eight. So our radius is y, our height is seven square root y, and dy. Okay, we could bring the seven out front. So it's 14 pi integral. We have y times square root y. Square root y is a half power, so it's y to the first power, which you should never write times y to the half power, so you add those, you have y to the three halves power. And this is just anti-power rule. So it's y to the five halves. You just add one to three halves, you add two halves to three halves to get five halves, multiply by the reciprocal two fifths, and going zero to eight. Okay, I don't think this number will be nice. 14 times two is 28 over five pi. So that's a constant. Now, plugging in eight to the five halves power minus zero to the five halves power, zero to almost any power is zero. And this should be the answer right here and plug that in your calculator, and it should be the value I'm about to uncover right here. And it is a big value. This is quite a large region.